The problem with romantic love. I know, I know, bah humbug, happy Valentine's Day. But hear me out. Friends of mine and I have been talking about romance and romantic love, and I probably sound like I don't believe in love or being in love, and that's just not true. I mean, who doesn't love that rush of adrenaline and testosterone and dopamine when you get a message or a phone call from somebody that you like? But married couples and people in long-term relationships will probably agree that those types of feelings are really hard to sustain. And I'm not implying that married couples or people who have been together for a long time don't still feel excited and get butterflies when they're gonna see each other or have these amazing nights of passion together. What I am saying is that you shouldn't build a relationship based on romantic feelings. Romantic love by definition is volatile and passionate and dramatic but it's also possessive and conditional and one-sided. Mysterious, exciting, an enjoyable love affair, especially one that is not serious or long-lasting. Um, what? If romance is so short-term and unsustaining, then what is it for? Well, we can't really look at that without also looking at marriage. Originally, people were courted in order to enter into the union of marriage. Marriage was actually created during the agricultural revolution as a way to legally attach people to property and food rights. The contract of marriage was a way for men to know that they were providing this food for children that were biologically their own and women conversely also were able to make sure that their children would survive. So romantic, I know. But is this old world idea of romance and marriage still applicable in our modern world? Most of us don't grow our own food and we're quite capable of going to the grocery store and buying our own food supply. Yet we still practice these old school traditions of men providing the food when we go out on a date. Well, in many cultures and religious communities around the world, marriage is still a precursor to having a sexual relationship. So a lot of times we're pursuing this partner in order to obtain a sexual right to them. Therefore, romance is somewhat of a barter because by agreeing to that, what I'm saying is, is that my love and affection is for sale or for barter. And that's not the type of relationship that I wanna be in. Let's look how most romantic relationships would start. They would meet up online or through a friend, decide that they like the look of each other. And that usually would lead to kissing, which maybe would lead to hooking up, which would be really fun for a while. But then suddenly they would start having feelings for one another. They might even be asking for exclusivity at some point, which is okay at first until one or both of them find somebody else that gives them these feelings of excitement and drama and mystery. One or both partners may start to feel like it's less intense. They've come out of this honeymoon stage. Neither partner really communicates with the other one for fear of hurting them because they love them. And so they just basically implode. And so it goes on this way for a little bit where they don't communicate and maybe they withdraw their love and affection from the other person. Maybe they even end up having an affair with someone else. Personally, I'd prefer to not have the drama. I would prefer to have a mutually respectful, communicative, considerate relationship. So let's look at how that would go. They meet online or through a friend and decide they like the look of each other, which starts the process of getting to know each other better. And then they start to share what their needs and expectations are. Does one or both partners need exclusivity in order to continue? Or can they just be casual? Let's say they have a non-exclusive friendship for a while and continue to hook up. And maybe at some point, one or both partners start to have feelings. Then they can talk about those feelings and figure out if they wanna continue or if maybe they want to progress into an exclusive relationship. Do they wanna have kids? Do they want to get married? 
And yes, it can actually go in that order. Or maybe their love of each other doesn't need to turn into responsibility of each other. Maybe they don't need to become attached or physically responsible. Can they be mutually respectful and affectionate even if that means not gaining anything from the other person? Can they be friends forever regardless of whether or not they stop hooking up? Both scenarios may start similarly, but the two of them turn into very different human connections. When it comes to romantic love, it's literally controlled by one person. One person gives someone so much attention and affection that it makes the other person have this dependency. It creates this feeling of infatuation because of how that other person makes them feel. But that same person can just as easily withdraw that affection and attention, leaving the other person feeling desperate and helpless, which is kind of exactly what they are because they can't control the actions of the other person. Not for me, thanks. In the second example, both people make self-aware, conscious decisions to love one another. It doesn't thrive on just one person's affection and attention and also can't be destroyed by one person either. Their feelings are rooted in something of substance, things that actually can be sustained. This is the kind of love that is truly unconditional because regardless of what somebody is able to give to you, you will still maintain your love and affection for them whether you remain married, whether you remain friends, whether you're just lovers or rarely see each other. This kind of humanity is something that we are all capable of. And that's the type of relationship that should be celebrated and valued and practiced.